Etif wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu. Obia owo happy FM nyan sabua kwa number should uh, make sure you are tag nyan sabua kwa in this video. Tag nyan sabua kwa. It is not necessary for us to go there, but if you want us to come, inshallah, we shall rep. But for the meantime, we are using what we have and we are going to respond to Avram bin Moshe's challenge, inshallah. Avram threw a challenge on Nyan Sabuakwe's platform that he dares any Muslim scholar to come out to respond to this allegation with regards to Zainab bin Jash's marriage to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he said, it is so shameful. Brothers and sisters, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook and also on TikTok. Donate to support our UTI Dawa studio in which we are building. May Allah reward you, may Allah bless you, may Allah grant you Janatul Firdaus through this number, inshallah. Let's listen to Avram bin Moshe. <laughs> خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر به سبا. to tag Nyan Sabuakwa so that you will see this video. Um, if you want us to come, inshallah, we shall pass through. But uh, if it does not, it is not a problem. We've responded. At least you need to see this video. Avram B. Moshe, Avram B. Moshe always tried to justify his sex lifestyle, his uh, numerous uh, immoral character to, to moral standard of living. There is no single tradition, culture, or any moral standard of living that compares adultery and fornication to marriage. It is never the same. So for Abraham to even compare his uh, uh, Asibolanga lifestyle to the marriage life of the prophet is a disrespect to humanity and to the intelligence of people. Now let's look at the marriage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Zainab bin Jash. One thing that I would like all of us to understand is that Zainab Bint Josh is actually a cousin of the Prophet and she grew up in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Her mother is called Sayyida Umayma Bint Abdul Muttalib who was the aunt of the Prophet. She was the aunt of the Prophet. And note that in Islam, there are kind of women you cannot marry and there are kind of women that you can marry. As the Quran says in Quran 4 verse number 23 that it is forbidden for you to marry your mothers, your daughters, and your sisters, and your father's sisters, and your mother's sisters, and the, uh, and the daughters of your brothers, and the daughters of your sisters, and the mothers allati who are the anakum who nurse you wa akhwatukum and your sisters mina rada mina rada eh uh, from from the nursing that's those you 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 are nest together wa ummahatu and the mothers in nisaikum the nurse the mothers of your wives eh wa rabaibukum and your stepdaughters allati allati fi hujurikum uh, who are in your guardianship min nisaikum uh, your women allati of whom dakhaltum you had relations bihinna with them fa illam takunu uh, but if you had not dakhaltum relation bihinna with them falajunaha 
Fala, then there is no Juna has sin aleikum on you. Wahala ilu abna ikum and wives of your sons. Alazina min asulabikum who are from your loins. Wa an tajima u bayna uhtaini illama kot salafa. you gather together between uh two sisters. Illama kot salafa, except those you, you did uh, before that is in Jahiliya. In Allah Kena Gafura Rahima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Gafurun. He is of, uh, uh, forgiving Rahima most merciful. So this is the criteria of which Muslims are supposed to follow in marriage. This is the criteria which says prohibited to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your father's sisters, your mother's sisters, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, your milk mothers who nurse you, your sisters through nursing your wife's mothers and your stepdaughters under your guardianship born of your wives unto whom you have gone in but if you have not gone into them there is no sin upon you and also from your own loins and that you take in marriage two sisters simultaneously except for uh what has already uh, occurred indeed allah is ever for forgiving and merciful so this is it this allah is ever forgiving and merciful so if you don't fall into this criteria, you have not committed any evil. Note this very, very well. The Prophet Sallallahu is supposed to be a leader for us to follow. And so Quran says in Quran 33 verse 21, You understand? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi uh, Wasallam, he is the perfect example for mankind to follow. You understand? So he set this criteria of marriages for us to follow. And this is the order from Allah. Now Zainab bint Jash, is his cousin. His mo uh, her mother is the aunt of the prof Prophet ﷺ. Note this very, very well too. During pre-Islam, the Prophet ﷺ had taken uh, Zaid bin Haris as his adopted son in pre-Islam. And when Islam came and the Quran verses were being revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abolished uh, uh, adopted sonship in Islam by revealing this verse from Quran chapter number 33, verse number uh, 4 to 5, where it says, Ma ja'ala Allahu li rajulin min kalbaini fi jawfihi. Allah did not place two hearts inside any man's body. Wa ma ja'ala adhwa jakumul la'i tuzahiruna min hunna ummahatikum. He said, nor did he make your wives whom you equate with your mothers, your actual mothers. Uh -huh. Because in Jahiliya, uh, when someone wants to divorce a, a woman, he, he, they, they have what they call zihar. He would, he would say that if I ever have intercourse with you, you then I have had intercourse with my mother. It is called zihar. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also abolishing this tradition at the same time. Where he says, uh, Nor did he make your adopted children, your actual children. So your adopted child in Jahiliya, in pre-Islam, you cannot marry uh, your adopted son's wife because in pre-islam when you adopt a child that child is like your biological child but in islam it is not so the child is not your biological child you cannot put your name even you cannot use your same name for him and then it says uh these are are your words coming out of your mouth uh, allah speaks the truth and he guides upon the earth. So this is it. And then it says, uh, this is because uh, during pre-Islam, Zaid was called Zaid bin Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You understand? And when this verse was revealed, then he was then called after his own father's name. Ed'ohum li'aba'ihim who aqsat in the Allah. So call them after their fathers. That is more equitable for Allah. Fa'illam ta'lamu a'aba'ahum fa'ikhwanukum fi'ddini. Then it says, but if you do not know their fathers, then your they are your, they become your brethren, eh? and uh, in faith and your friends. Walaysa alaykum junahun fima akhtaatum bi walakin mata amadat kulubukum. It says there is no blame on you if you make a mistake in it. Eh? Bearing what your heart intent. Waken Allahu gafura rahima. Allah is forgiving and merciful. So this was the verse that abolished that. Now, again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then wanted Zaid to marry 
uh, Zainab, his cousin. So they got married. Now what happened after this marriage? The marriage did not work because Zaid thought uh, Zainab was much more spiritual than him. And so it did not work. So he came to the Prophet and asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a permission to divorce her. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, keep your wife. And UT is not saying this. this there is a hadith on that also. And Suhail Buhari, hadith number 6984. It was narrated by Anas. Who said, Zaid ibn Harissa came complaining. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fear Allah and keep your wife. But the non Muslims are there lying to people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, uh, uh, snatched his uh, adopted son's wife. He said, Fear Allah and keep your wife. Anna said, If the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had concealed anything, he would have concealed this. He said, Zaid used to boast. To the uh, Zainab used to boast to the other wives uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, saying, your, fam your families arrange your marriages, but Allah arranged my marriage from above the seven heavens. So Zaid, or the, uh, Zaid used to take complaints to the Prophet that I want to divorce my wife. The reason was just simple, because she was much more into spirituality than him. And so he wanted to divorce her. So the marriage did not work out. There was a lot of misunderstanding between them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to tell him that keep your wife unto yourself. Don't divorce her. Now, however, Zaid uh, continued to have this feeling that uh, Zainab bint Jash had this ethics that, uh, that deserved to be the Prophet's wife. And so uh, uh, he does not qualify to be equal to her. And so he went further to divorce her. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not even like that divorce issue. He did not like it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became very sad due to the end of the marriage because Zaid and Zainab, uh, because they, they lacked that spiritual harmony. And so uh, when the divorce came, he wasn't happy at all because Zainab was his relative and uh, she had grown in front of him. Seeing her marriage failed is, is actually a disturbed one. And Zaid, he loved so much that he even adopted him as his son in uh, previous uh, during pre-Islam, so it became very disturbing issue uh, for him. So uh, Zainab had to do Edda, Edda, and the Edda ended, and she was around thirty-five years of age when the Edda uh, ended. Now, assuming people even want to say the Hadith is fabrication, blah blah blah, there is even a Quran ayah in the Quran chapter number thirty-three, verse number thirty-seven, where it says. Where he says, when you said to him, whom Allah has blessed and you are favored, with favor he was a slave and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi bought him and monumented him and gave him his freedom and even took him to be his adopted son and pray Islam. And now he, 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 uh, uh, he favored him. Keep your wife to yourself. The Prophet said to him, keep your wife to yourself. Keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah. But you hide within yourself what Allah has, Allah was to disclose. Because the Prophet Allah has already revealed to him. Allah SWT has already revealed to him that Zainab will be his wife. You know, Allah other wajalla could reveal future, some of the things in the future to, to his prophet. As, as he says, So he revealed to him what will happen in the future. So he, is, he was aware that uh, Zainab will become his wife. Now, if he had wanted her earlier, she was, she grew up in his home. He could have just married her. Nothing could have happened. He, he shouldn't have, he wouldn't have even given her to Zaid uh, at all. Now, so then he says, and you feared the people. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to think that, look, uh, my, my, my boy, someone I love so much, and my companion had married her before. And she has, was also my cousin. So how am I supposed to marry her? If I, am, if I ever tell people that I, should, uh, I am the one to marry her, people will be talking a lot about me. And so let me conceal this, uh, uh, this verse and let them marry. I should just leave them alone. And this is Allah's one water reprimanding him. Then when Zaid ended his relationship with her, we gave her to you in marriage. So the, Zaid, Zaid himself ended the marriage with his wife. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala married her to the prophet. So he did not go and snatch his uh, adopted son's wife. There was a divorce after the divorce. And even when, even when he wanted to divorce her, the prophet was forcing him to marry her. And until the divorce was done, the idda was done, and the idda is uh, she will see three blood. That is, she will menstruate three times. After that uh, three monthly menstruation, then she's free to marry whoever she wants. That's the Islamic rule. So after that, the Prophet ﷺ then married her and made her his wife. And this marriage was blessed by Allah. Now, why was this verse even revealed? Why was this verse even revealed? One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to change the norm, the custom. He wanted to abrogate. Now, this, uh, this, is, this is what we call abrogation. He wanted to change the norm, the custom. He wanted to abrogate the norm, the custom that was there earlier in pre-Islam, whereby your adopted sons were seen as your real sons, and they could inherit you, and you cannot marry their wives, and you cannot uh, call them by their father's name, and do stuff like that. Allah Azza wa Jalla wanted to remove that thing. And so he had to cause a major event to happen. Then he will remove that, co uh, uh, that culture and that custom and so allow Abdul Wajala made the prophet uh, remove uh, Zaid from becoming his adopted son and the adopted son uh, syndrome let me put it that way the adopted son culture syndrome was then abolished by Allah Abdul Wajala then a new law was then prescribed changing the regular custom which uh, couldn't be changed except by a major incident so Allah wanted this law to be introduced uh, to the world so that the whole world will know and then you can marry those you wanted to marry. So you understand. So there was nothing wrong in the prophet's marriage and it is moral and it is, and there is nowhere that, uh, uh, that the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had done anything evil over here. And morally, it is okay. Morally, it is okay. And this was a door opening for other people to marry other people. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh.